What's up, family? It's your man, Daryl. The second I'm out and about taking care of some business. I wanted to drop this word. It came to my heart earlier today. But before I do, you already know. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for this word, Lord. I thank you for using me as an instrument, and I pray that what you want to be um, carried across would be done so. I pray every person that hears this would be touched in their spirit, Father, and touched in their soul, and that they would feel the presence of you hit them strongly, and that they would have um, a visitation of you in their life, and an evaluation of things that you want them to consider and to know. And Lord, I pray that they would have a transparent moment with themselves, God. Um, especially if they're, um, they don't know you. I pray that they would come to know you, Lord. And if there's areas in their life where they, they need your help, I pray that you would reveal yourself. Lord, I think about the earthquake that happened when Jesus died on that cross and how the veil that separated the Ark of the Covenant from people in the temple, it was torn in two, symbolizing the separation between man and God no longer being there because of your son, Jesus. So Lord, I pray for visitations for each person that hears this message and that a transparent um, occurrence would occur and that your truth would just hit their hearts in a powerful, powerful way and that you would manifest your glory in their life, your love, your peace, your mercy, um, and your character and that they would come to know you as you are not as they perceive not as what they've heard But as who you truly are in the name of your son, Jesus the Christ Yeshua Hamashiach I pray and thank you. Holy Ghost Ruach HaKadosh lead through me I, I invite you in this as well You are more than welcome Holy Spirit to move on this message as you see fit It is the truth that it is your words that come through me many times when I preach I don't even have anything prepared You just drop it in my spirit and then when I invite you you flow through me God So I want the world to know that it is not me though You give me a gift and a calling it is the Spirit of God that works through me that allows me to do what I do and they need to know it is not me because no glory for me. You said no gl flesh or glory in my presence. Holy Spirit, I don't want the glory. I don't want it at all. Hide me and take center stage in the name of Jesus and let them see you and only you. Amen. All right, y'all. I just wanted to send a message of encourage. Start where you are. I think it's really easy to look at time wasted, um, years having passed and look at endeavors that God has put in our heart that have collected dust and we sadly want to give up on ourselves. I want to encourage you that maybe seasons have passed, maybe situations have occurred that have made you feel despondent and um, fearful to even pick back up the plow that you once had in the labor that you were called to. But I want to encourage you and say that God is a faithful God and an awesome God, and he can make your latter days better than your former. In fact, the Bible says your latter days shall be better than your former. So I want to encourage you wherever you are, just pick back up pick back up where you left off or just start now if you haven't ever started um sometimes it kind of like going to a restaurant you see a buffet you see all this these selections of food in front of you you don't know where to begin well i would just say take your time and gradually work your way through and god will show you when you put your faith in action with where he has called you to go he will grace you he already has graced you with the success to do what you are called to do success is in your hand that's the song of Fred Hammond, but it's true. Even in the book of, I believe, Exodus, he was saying that he has blessed our hands to be um, prosperous. So I encourage you, don't, don't give up on yourself. Don't give up on what he's put in your life. Maybe you've committed yourself to things that you knew you weren't called to, and that's why you feel unhappy with your life. It's okay. Romans 8, 28 says that all things work together for the good of those who love God and who are called according to his purpose. That means the good, the bad, and the ugly, he can use it to work for your good if you know him and you love him and you're called according to his purpose. Your mess can be a message for someone else, but this is a day of redemption for you. You may have made mistakes in your past, but you can get back up and start over again. God can heal you, he can redeem you, he can restore you, he can replenish you, and he can bring life um, changes and meaning and purpose to you. And so I just wanted to encourage you today and just let you know that it's not too late. It's not too late to get back up and do what God called you to do. It's not too late. And you may have to repent and say, God, I'm sorry, please forgive me. Do it. Excuse me. Repent means to change your mind and turn away from something. But if you need to ask for forgiveness, ask, but it's not too late. If God gave you breath in your lungs and woke you up this morning, it's because he's still waiting on you to get some things done. He is merciful. Each day is a brand new day of mercy. That the fact that you woke up and your lungs are working, your heart's moving, that's purpose. And he's breathing in your life. And so I want to just pray, Lord, I pray that you breathe the spirit of your purpose on each, each viewer and that they would just be revived, Father, resuscitated. And I pray that any area that they're struggling in, any snare in their life that they're trying to be free from, help them, God. I pray any relationship that they're trying to get out of, but they're stuck through a soul tie, um, any bondage, Lord, I pray for freedom, Lord. You said where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. I pray that the liberty of you would just impact them and that they would just come embrace you and that those old things, the Bible says, oh, behold, old things have passed away. All things have become anew. I pray that those old things would move and that new things would occur in their life and they would have 
have a revival and a transformation and that those people that they don't need to listen to, they would separate from Father and hear your voice loud and clear on what they should do. Even in those moments of testing, in Jesus' name, amen. Um, what is, what was I, I was going to say? Um, oh, well, anyway, had a lot of thoughts coming to my mind. But listen, if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, that's the first thing you should do. Because if you don't know Jesus, then you don't know the Father. Jesus says, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. And these, the Bible says his commandments aren't burdensome. It's love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. Um, I, th that's the fulfillment of the law. Whoa, oh, that was a beat. That's the fulfillment of the law. And so I just want to say, um, John three sixteen says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son and that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. And so if you want to have eternal life, not just life in the earth here, but life in heaven after this earth is gone. Because the Bible says that he will baptize the earth with fire. The elements themselves will be burned because judgment's coming. And the Bible says he judges the church first. And it says, if the righteous are barely saved, how much for the sinner? So I'm encouraging you get to know Jesus so that you can be considered righteous because your own works will not make you righteous. I can't be made righteous in my own works. I was born in sin. I was born a sinner. A sinner means you missed the mark. That's all of us. The Bible makes it very clear because of what Adam and Eve did in the garden. Everybody that comes from the bloodline is born in sin. So Jesus had to come and he was the new bloodline, the new covenant. And when he died on the cross, his blood was shed to um they call it remissions of sin but basically to wash away our sins and make us clean and new and when you receive him as lord and savior you put your faith in him as jesus as lord and savior by confessing with your mouth and believing in your heart that he died on the cross and was risen again from the dead and you ask him to be your lord and savior his righteousness becomes your righteousness because the truth is he lived a perfect life something we couldn't do he was the example and so he was our scapegoat and so by us accepting him as our as our scapegoat we are pardoned from the from the death that we deserve on that cross now let me make sure you understand when you know jesus the cost of being a disciple is sometimes you will be attacked not liked and hated simply because you belong to him but that's not a bad thing that just means there's a distinction between who you are and um, who you're called to you're not in the you're in the world but you're not of it and so if you want to know jesus like i said i wanted to make sure you know the cost but it's important to know him because if you don't when you die you're going to hell and he does not want that. I say that candidly just so you understand the seriousness of the gospel message of Jesus Christ, because it really is good news because we were all destined to, to go to hell. And God is like, I love y'all too much. We ain't going to do that. I'm going to give you guys an opportunity. And God loves us so much that when Jesus died, he went to hell and he preached to people that were waiting on him. And he died for people even who had, who had perished before he had even come to the earth. God thought about the people in the past and the people in the future. That's, um, that's, that's love. And so if you want to know Jesus, then repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I believe you died on that cross. I believe you died, uh, God the Father raised you from the dead. Please come into my heart and be my Lord and my Savior. If you did that, his spirit is in your heart now. Your name is written in the book of life and there is a celebration in heaven because of what you just did. Um, I, I will say sometimes friends and family may view you differently because his spirit is now in your heart and you look different, you'll seem different, but it doesn't mean it's a bad thing, but sometimes, sometimes that does happen. Um, sometimes people may want to take your life. I, that's in the gospel. I'm just being real with you. Um, but you're, ca you're carrying your cross. And that's part of being a disciple, a follower of him. Jesus said the student is not greater than the teacher. If they called him the son of the prince of demons and he was actually the son of God, then they would call us by worse names. So I encourage you be of good cheer. Read the word of God. It'll bless you. I don't mean to scare you from salvation. It's a beautiful thing. But I also don't want you to be caught off guard because the Bible says, think it not strange when these fiery trials come upon you as if there's some strange happening. You will be attacked because the devil doesn't like you because you carry the spirit of God in you. The devil doesn't like God, man's creation, God's creation anyway, which is man. Um, but God loves you. He says, what is man that thou art mindful of him? He has so much care and concern that he sent his only begotten son for you. So I'm going to get off this, um, this, this live. I think I wanted to, I'm trying to think, I wanted to pray something. But Lord, um, if, if there's anybody who, let's say you're connected to something and you're like, Lord, I can't get free of this. I want to pray over you right now. Um, perhaps you're connected to an old relationship through maybe sexual sin or what have you or things you've done. We want to pray a prayer of renouncing. And I want to I want to pray for you because sometimes you may have moved on physically, but your spirit's still attached to stuff. And by praying, we can ask God to sever the ties of ungodly relationships that you're affiliated with so that you can feel the freedom of that burden in your soul. So just repeat after me. Lord Jesus. I repent of every ungodly relationship that I've taken part in. And I ask you to sever the ties of anything I've done that is not like you. I renounce all 
wicked actions, um, any sexual sins, any sexual connections that I should not have had, um, and any ungodly soul ties that I've had with anybody. In the name of Jesus the Christ, I pray right now. Please restore me, heal me, and I receive your peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if, if you have to renounce, you may have to say the person's name to yourself out loud. Say, Lord, I renounce it from this person. That's fine. But I just wanted to give you something to work with because um, I think there's a lot of people that are still struggling with some things and some baggage, and God wants to free you. He said, who the Son sets free is free indeed. And he said, I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. I um, <laughs> I didn't know I was going to go in all this direction. But um, you be blessed, you be encouraged. My name is Daryl Alder II. I'm on Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook. And I just want you to know that this is the day that the Lord has made. Rejoice and be glad in it because it's not over for you. He's got purpose in your life. God bless you. Peace.